Hey guys, Magnolia Root Productions here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I modeled the track and painted the track on my HO scale module, which represents Yemassee, South Carolina, circa 1982. The techniques that are demonstrated here today can be used by anyone from beginner to pro. And all it takes is a little paint and a little time, and you guys can have a module or some track just set aside that will look really, really good with minimal amount of work. So as you can see, the track work is laid, ballasted, and painted, and all it takes is just a little work. This is HO scale. You can forgive some of the, the soldering. Some of the soldering is not the greatest, but very end, I'll show you guys how you can make scenery and track that looks just like this. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is paint your track. Let me scoot the camera back a little bit. So the very first thing you're, well actually, the first thing you want to do is lay your track. I use a good quality adhesive called Liquid Nails. It is a construction adhesive that comes in a tube. It looks like this. It is in a big tube. All I do is I run a thin bead down the area you can see it right here and then I thin it out with either a with either a uh, spackle knife or a thin piece of plastic once that's done you want to take the track you want to lay it down and weigh it down. Make sure that you align it the way that you want. Make sure it's straight and then weigh it down. The easiest way I've found to lay it to make sure that it is straight is to simply look down the length of your track by eye. By eye, sighting it by eye is the number one way to get the track straight because you will be able to see the imperfections. You can use a straight edge. I have used a straight edge before and it doesn't always work. Now while the track is drying, if you are using a substance such as cork, foam, or in this case, Luon plywood, you can simply use wire nails to <clears throat> hold the track in place temporarily and it helps you align everything a little bit at a time. Here is one such nail. As you can see, it is in the middle. What this allowed me to do was to take the track and move it to the left or to the right and then when I got it exactly where I wanted it, I simply took a hammer and nailed it down. So with the track, <clears throat> once you have it laid down, glued down, and in place exactly where you want it, the next thing I do is I paint the track. Now painting the track can be done in several different ways. If you have a very large setup and you have a lot of track, there is nothing wrong with using spray cans. However, I find that spray cans tend to throw paint all over the place. And although rails are generally brown and the ties are generally brown, <clears throat> I model a short line in which the rail and the tie colors are going to be different. So I'm going to go sh ahead and show you guys a little quick demonstration of what I do. So first things first, 
once you've got the track laid down where you want, most of the time I spray everything gray. I will take a spray can of flat gray paint <clears throat> and I'll spray everything gray. That will get the ties, the rails, everything. <clears throat> now, that doesn't always work. Sometimes I'll spray everything brown. A very base brown color, which would be the same as the brown that's on the side of this rail. Which is usually a... I usually go with a camo brown kind of color. It more or less really helps with the overall... It'll be the same brown as right here. And it helps blend all of the, everything together. Because the big thing about painting the track... Is just getting rid of the plastic shine of the ties. If it didn't matter about the shine, the plasticky shine that's all over the ties, you could just paint the rail sides and that would be fine. But to me, in my opinion, the shine on the side of the plastic ties just kills any careful ballasting and painting job of the rails, rails and rail heads that you do. So first things first, for this track, I spray painted it gray, masked off the ties, and then spray painted just the rails a rust inhibitive primer, which happened to be a rust oxide color. Now, for the short line that I model in coastal South Carolina, that is a correct color for unused track. The track that you saw earlier on the main line, the double track main line, is <clears throat> a heavy everyday used main line. So it would be more of that slightly rusty but more or less almost greasy brown kind of color that most main lines tend to be. Here you can kind of see what I'm talking about. If you looked at the other paint, you would notice that it was more of a light rust color. Whereas this is more of a blackish brown that is mixed together. And there has been lighter brown airbrushed over the ties and the ballast right around the ties to represent the rust runoff from the tie plates. All right, so now that you've seen the different colors and the comparisons, now we can begin. Keeping in mind, the rails here were painted with a rust oxide color, a rust oxide inhibitive primer that you can buy at nearly any auto parts store. The other main line was simply a camo brown sprayed over everything with some slight variations done afterwards with a paintbrush, some different paints, and an airbrush. The track weathering that I'm showing you today does involve an airbrush. If you do not have an airbrush, I highly recommend that you buy one. I cannot overstress enough how much an airbrush changes your model. Anyway, so for the short line track, <clears throat> the first thing that I did after spray painting it all brown to kill off the plastic shine was I took testers, create effects, acrylic wash in a driftwood color. I then simply take a paintbrush after wetting it and dipping it in the paint and brush, almost dry brushing, over the ties on all sides until the ties are, in essence, dry brushed with that paint color. I will then, once it dries, go over it with Mission Models Dark Rust 1, 
for the rail sides. This is also a rust oxide color, very similar to this color. Not as stark, but still very similar. It's very close, but it's not the exact same. Next up, I'll take a micro brush. I don't know if I can get the focus or not. I'll take a micro brush and I'll use it on the paint and I'll simply use that rusty paint and paint just the rail sides and the tie plates. Much like what's done up there. Afterwards, in some places, such as rail joints and certain features that I would like to add extra highlight to, Vallejo Oxide Rust Wash is added in places such as joint bars, turnouts, and other assorted track details which would have lighter rust streaking, which it normally includes anywhere a bolt or foreign object is drilled, pressed, punched, or welded to the side of the rail. Remember, railroad rail is a very high grade quality steel. Anything else that is on the side of it may not be that same rail and may rust differently. Hence, model wash. Lastly, when I'm done, <clears throat> I will go over with the same, not the same, but with another micro brush. And I will take Mission Models Rail Tie Brown and highlight different ties. Most of the time, I will take that rail tie brown and go over the majority of the ties as a quick little wash. I may airbrush that color on. I may brush it on. It just depends. Now, the very last step, which you saw on the main line, <clears throat> this doesn't really necessarily have to happen with a short line track. If I'm modeling the main line, I'll do it. If I'm modeling the short line track, I will probably uh, leave it off. But for the main line track, I would take this and I would airbrush a very thinned version, so like a wash, and I'll airbrush the uh, edges of the rails. So, the airbrush that I use is simply an Awada Neo. It is not expensive. It is very small. It is a double action. So, all I'll do is airbrush here to here and the rail on the ballast as well. Don't try to mask it. Just get the ballast, the edge of the ties, right around where the tie plates are. Make an effort to... Make an effort to get that rust color on the gravel, on the ballast, because the ballast in real life is going to take on the staining of that rust. Then once that's done, your track is now painted. You can clear coat it, or in my case, because the airbrushing, um, the airbrushing when it goes on is the very final step. You don't have to clear coat it. I would just to make sure that that little bit stays forever encased. You could also do the same with powders, but powders tend to wear off even easier. Now for a module that constantly goes around to different places, such as this one, it will be clear coated. If you were on a model railroad in which it was permanently done inside a building and it's never going anywhere, you can skip the clear coating step. Now for the main line, the main line is slightly different. And the way that I do the main line is slightly different. So here's the main line. This is done slightly differently. So first things first, the main line will get the brown over brown to kill off all of the 
shine. However, at this point, with the exception of taking the, the Dark Rust 1 from Mission Models, I'll take it and I'll dry brush it along the edges. Oh, got a little piece of something there. I'll take it and brush it along the edges of the rail, the edges of the frogs. And that helps highlight the rail and give it a slightly different color to slightly, ever so slightly differentiate it from the brown ties. On the main line, the brown ties are still going to be fairly dark and fairly brown. Short lines very rarely maintained their railroad ties on a regular basis the way a class one heavy double track main line would do. Now, if for anyone that is knowledgeable of the Yemassee, South Carolina railroad scene, that is the old Atlantic Coast Line, now CSX, main line between New York and Jacksonville. Well, between DC and Jacksonville, I should say. Um, I'm not very familiar with what happens to it once it hits DC, but I do know from DC to Jacksonville, it is alternating double and single track main line. Heavy main line sees probably 20 trains a day. Their ties are going to be a lot more maintained than the short line track that I'm modeling below. But anyway, once I get done brushing this on the rails, I will take this again and I will add it to the frogs, to the joint bar areas, and in varying places where I want to model something like maybe on a siding track where some cars sat for a while and the rust streaked down the side of the rail. Once that's done, I'll take that same dark rust one and airbrush all along the edges, just like I said on the other sections of mainline. And then the track is done. Occasionally, for varied interest, I will take rail tie brown and go over a tie or two to add a little bit of interest. Here you can see a slightly better version of what I was describing. Here, this as well as this are that dark rust one. Very slightly different than this color, but just barely. Here you can see I've done a single tie that looks brand new, as if it was just replaced. And how I did that was simply Tamiya XF1 flat black paint. Now, keep in mind, all of this is done before the track is ballasted and glued down. At the end of the day, you have to do this painting before you have to do the painting to pick out certain ties and to do the majority of the main painting before the track is ballasted. The rust details and the airbrushing has to be done afterwards. But picking out ties to paint black and overall painting the majority of the track and the majority of the ties has to be done before ballasting. Otherwise, you're just going to get paint on the ballast and it's just going to look like you painted the rock. Lastly, here is how I did the crossings and the roads for the module. The roads are done with 3M high strength small hole repair interior spackle. It is not it is not necessarily cheap. And it is available mostly at Lowe's and Home Depot. It is a high quality, extremely smooth spackle. And all you do is you, when you get ready to put it down, you use the 
Woodland, I used the Woodland Scenics paving tape and used that as my edges. And then in between, I simply take the spackle knife and spread it out. It does require a lot of water to help thin it down. Otherwise, it's just going to pull itself right up. But it does allow you to more easily model things like potholes, rough roads, and the like. Because all it takes is a little work. Here, I've added little amounts of beach sand. And that kind of represents the... Um, a road that had been tar and graveled at some point. With the ties for the crossing, all I did was to, I took strip wood. I couldn't remember the size, but it is the same size as a nature scale tie. Matchsticks also work just great. And I cut it to varying lengths for prototypical realism. And then I used Old English dark walnut wood stain, furniture stain, to brush over the wood. It imparts an extremely dark, almost creosote color to the timbers. One application will be very lightweight. If you put three or more applications on, they will be almost black. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope any of this information was helpful. At the end of the day, this is simply how I do my track work. It is not a recommendation on how to do yours. It's simply my experience, my knowledge, and my practices based on the things that I see every day working on the railroad. Feel free to comment. Feel free to share. Feel free to chime in with any ideas, options, or tips that you might have as well. I'm always open to suggestions. That concludes today's segment, and I will talk to you all later.